Hello fans of Boats That Fly, Ray here, and I'm going to answer the number one question. What are hydrofoils? This question comes up frequently since 100,000 people have viewed the videos I posted in the last six months. My answer surprises some when I say that hydrofoils, that a hydrofoil is an airplane that flies underwater. The airplane has struts that extend above and support the hull that speeds above the water's surface. The hull can be virtually anything that floats. That's why this recycled windsurfer board can serve as a hull. Surely you jest, some say, to which I respond, please don't call me Shirley. But seriously, water and air are considered by aerodynamicists to behave as fluids. The big difference is water is 800 times denser than air. Most aviation principles and the formulas that express these principles apply as well to hydrofoils after they have been adjusted by a factor of 800. Another big difference is permissible altitude excursions. An airplane can deviate from its cruise altitude by hundreds of feet, no problem. But a hydrofoil must maintain its altitude within inches to, become, to avoid becoming hull-borne or flying out of the water. This results in a design difference. Most airplanes have big wings in front and indeed this configuration is called conventional. But most motor and human powered hydrofoils have their big wings amidship and their very small wing at the bow. This design allows the front foil to regulate only the flying height while the larger aft wing provides 80% of the lift. This big wide foil has lifting authority to easily control the roll of the boat despite the boat's high center of gravity. Aviators use the French word canard or duck to describe this configuration. Indeed, some aircraft are canards, not many, but I just happen to have one here to show you. This little beauty is a canard style aircraft. It was designed by Burt Rattan in the 1970s and it's popular with home builders. If I were a duck, I'd be proud to share my name with this aircraft. Look at the small wing on the bow and the large wing at the stern near the center of gravity. This supports the majority of the weight of the airplane. Now let's take a look again at High Five and make a comparison between these two flying machines. Notice the similarities between the Canard aircraft and my High Flying Banana, or High Five for short. Here is a canard wing at the bow. This surface follower transmits information about the flying height to the bow foil. If the hull is too low, the angle of attack increases. If it is too high, the angle of attack decreases. This changes the lift. And in this way, the hull finds and maintains its correct flying height. Slightly after the center of gravity is the main foil. As I mentioned, 80% of the lift is created here at the rear foil. This is a true airfoil, such as the front as well. Just like an airfoil, two-thirds of the lift is created on the top of the wing. Notice the flippers are winglets. These are placed at the extreme outboard ends of the wing to create maximum leverage for roll control. The angle of attack of the winglets is determined by the joystick held in the pilot's hand. I hope this answers your question. Please don't ask me again. And remember, Mom, a hydrofoil is more like an airplane, not much like a boat. Look for Hydrofoil Ray when surfing YouTube and be ready to buy my book coming out late in 2008.